Sons. This is the 10th annual Peace Fair. We're here to build a world in which all children can thrive. We know it's possible, and we know it needs to be one step at a time, but I think today we'll have hundreds of steps taken. Thank you all very much. <laughs> this fair originated with Christine Detroit 10 years ago. Yes. And, and it's been a family, Detroit family collaboration ever since. I want to take just a minute to honor Christine and thank her for creating this event for us and for being a, a center place for all of us. Thank you. You are a peacemaker. Let us also remember the original impetus of the fair, which was to commemorate the Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which happened at about this time of year. Um, and we want to be sure that we don't let that be forgotten, that everything we do uh, lead us to a kind of wisdom that prevents it from ever happening again. Maybe today can be part of that learning of how to make sure that we can become a cooperative and nonviolent community. We are going to let the, these people open the fair today, uh, young activists who will say who they are and why they're activists and what project they're working on. Hi, I'm Marina McKinnon. I'm a junior at Brunswick High School. This is my sister, Jada McKinnon. Um, we started the pro uh, Safe Water for Guatemala Youth Project, where we'll be bringing water filters down to Guatemala, and we're using um, the dolls over there that you might see on the tent as teaching tools about safe water. So we leave on Tuesday to go to Guatemala and distribute the water filters. from accessing clean water. Um, it's water, like, um, Cold Spring and Nestle are kind of, like, bottled, like, Freiburg's water. And, um, so it's, like, it's kind of showing, like, that it's getting, like, drained of its water. Yeah. And put it in bottles, so. But you can, like, add whatever you want, too, just to, like, kind of it up. And, yeah. Yeah. So, you, you know, you can't make a mistake with everyone. Uh, this is Miles. Uh, my first name is Matthew. I I'm a senior at Bowdoin College, just like to speak. Um, the work that I do uh, often involves climate. I'm a climate organizer. Um, uh, uh, right now, my project is fossil fuel investment, um, which is the selling of the sort of, um, immoral investments in the fossil fuel industry that is destroying my future and the future of uh, future generations. Um, yeah, I work a lot with 350 Maine and 350.org, and I'm grateful to be have this opportunity to share my experiences all with you. Um, it was great to see the community come together from 350 Maine. There were students from University of Southern Maine there, and there were more students than I'd ever seen um, rallying for a political cause at Bowdoin before, which was uh, which was very powerful to me. And uh, we presented our our, our signatures uh, to President Mills, and. Uh, and uh, asked for a meeting with the board of trustees. And a few days later, uh, he said that we're going to be allowed to present to the trustees in October. So that's what we're gearing up for this next semester. Hi, I'm Clara. Um, I also go to Bowdoin. I'm going to be a sophomore. Uh, mostly work with Matt here also on climate issues. Um, and I think it's really important to be an activist because there's so many things that if you don't pressure people to change, will never change. Hi, I'm Brianna. I am a senior at Morse High School. I'm an activist because I believe everyone deserves equal rights and the equal opportunities. 
And um, <laughs> I'm planning a random acts of kindness day in my hometown on August 16th, which I want everyone to come to. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm planning it with Taylor, who will introduce herself. Um, I'm Dana Freshly. Um, I I love activism because I just I don't see any other way to live besides fighting for what you believe in. So um, what I'm involved in is um, gender equality. So I, I was the president of the Student Women's Association at UE. Um, I'm Taylor. I'm also a senior at Morris High School. Um, I'm an activist because I'm passionate about human rights and I believe that everybody deserves kindness. And um, there's more information about Random Acts of Kindness Day in the gazebo where we will be. And come support the Blue Scarf Movement at the gazebo. <laughs> represents the same blue sky that we all share and it's a symbol of togetherness. And it's, it's just spread around the world and people uh, at events like this like wear either blue scarves or bracelets like where are we going and we're just trying to spread the message. There you go girl. Uh -huh. We're dancing for peace. Uh, where's Charlie? They're free. Hannah, you're not shy are you? Wow, about halfway, and then we'll put some lavender. Oh my goodness. I feel the peace flowing through me right now. I feel so peaceful doing this. Yay, she'll dance with us. Peace pillows. Yes. Why are they peace pillows? Um, because they promote peace, happiness, and love, and it's just very calming and relaxing, and it's just something that, you know, we want to spread to everybody. the kind of person he was. And the other book that, that we did that he liked, I wrote a, a book with my daughter who was nine years old at the time. It is a, a dialogue between an ant about to get squished and a child with a leg, leg lifted up about to squish it. It's called Hey Little Ant. And it's basically a peace song. It, it was intended to isolate a moment in a person's life when they first realized they had the power not only to kill, but to refrain from killing. So I'm not going to sing it for you now. <laughs> so, when I'm standing, I'm the kid, with a, with a shoe raised up, when I'm seated, I'm the ant. Hey little ant, down in the crack, can you hear me, can you talk back, see my shoe, can you see that? Well now it's gonna squish you flat. Please, oh please, do not squish me, change your mind and let me be, I'm on my way home with a crumb of pie. Please don't hurt me. Don't make me die. Anyone knows an ant can't feel. You're so tiny, you don't look real. I'm so big and you're so small. I don't think it'll hurt at all. Yeah, well, you are a giant and giants can't know how it feels to be an ant. Come down close. I think you'll see that you are very much like me. Are you crazy? Me like you? I've got a home and a family too. You're just a speck that runs around. No one will care when my foot comes down. Oh, big friend, you are so wrong. My nest mates need me because I am strong. I dig our nest. Feed baby ants too. I must not die beneath your shoe. My mother says that ants are rude. They carry off our picnic food. They steal our chips and our breadcrumbs too. It's good if I squish a crook like you. <laughs> I'm not a crook, kid. Read my lips. <laughs> Sometimes ants need crumbs and chips. Why one single chip feeds our whole town.
You must not let your foot come down. But all my friends squish ants each day. Squishing ants is just a game we play. My friends are looking at me. They're listening too. They all say I should squish you. Well, I can see you're big and strong. Decide for yourself what's right and wrong. If you were me and I were you, what would you want me to do? So when my daughter and I perform this together, we hold hands and sing in harmony. Should the ant get squished? Should the ant go free? It's up to the kid, not up to me. So we'll leave the kid with the raised up shoe. What do you think that kid should do? The agricultural revolution took thousands of years. The industrial revolution took hundreds of years. The information revolution, he who did not have a computer, the information revolution is taking only decades. If we use the brains God gave us, who knows what miracles may now take place. Some of them have already. I'm mainly busy in my own hometown singing with kids. But I also sing in New York City and upriver occasionally. I take the opportunity to talk to people I disagree with. That's a skill we should all learn. Carry it on. of about a trillion dollars a year when you add it all up, the different categories of money that is spent per year by the United States on our military war machine at the time when we don't have any money for education or health care or really fixing roads and bridges or anything else in this country. So uh, we're really trying to bring those issues to light and get the people to think and talk more about them. What does it mean to be an empire in the world? What, what are the consequences of U.S. empire building with more than 800 bases all over the planet? How much does that cost us financially? But what does it also do to the planet environmentally? And what about the people in places like Okinawa and Jeju Island, Korea, who don't want another military base for U.S. warships and warplanes and soldiers? Uh, they don't want another uh, a base in their community that is destroying their pristine environment. So these are all questions that the people in Maine and in the United States need to be paying attention to and answering, ultimately. I'm here today because I just don't support the endless wars that our country just keeps getting involved in. Um, so I just join Bruce here all the time. Also, it's why I'm joining the peace walk that's coming up in October in regards to ending the drone warfare that's going on here in our country. Joe de Rivera from Peace Action Maine, and this is a penny poll. Uh, if we were a distributive democracy, uh, people could choose how to spend the money that they collect in taxes. Our government collected one trillion two hundred million dollars in taxes from us last year. And so we have pennies here, and each penny represents a hundred billion dollars. So you get twelve pennies, 
and you get to vote on how you'd like those 12 pennies spent. And we have here, as you can see, there's a lot of things our government has to spend money on. Agricultural, aid for housing and unemployment, community development, defense, education, and so on. I think there's 14 basic categories. And so we give people these pennies, 12 pennies, each one's $100 billion, and they can spend it as they want to, except for the first $200 billion, because that has to go to pay off the interest on our debt. That uh, the biggest category of expenses was uh, $625 billion uh, for defense. Uh, the next highest category was for uh, transportation, which had uh, $90 billion spent on it. So over half of our tax money uh, went for defense. I am collecting uh, petition signatures for Maine My citizens for clean elections, and uh, all of us volunteers uh, want to put a referendum on the 2015 ballot uh, to improve Maine's Clean Elections Act uh, by uh, increasing the amount of funding available to candidates uh, so that they can be more competitive and they'll be more likely to participate in the program. So it's to keep our elected officials honest. Yeah, that's that's the purpose of it. Now we can't really. Where do I sign? <laughs> well, what what town do you live in? Hi, I'm Salma stern and I'm here with We the People, Maine, and our petition is for an amendment to the Constitution that would overturn Citizens United. You know, Citizens United says that corporations are people and that money is speech. You take a metal disc, like one of these that is in the, the side one, face down, and then you take whatever picture you want, I just drew this one, and then you place it on top of that, then you take one of these plastic and place it on top of that, then you switch, you switch the side, and then take this metal part with the, the side down. Hi, uh, my name is Mike White. I'm from Georgetown, Maine, and I'm a climate activist. I'm a member of 350 Maine. I've taken part in stopping oil trains in Fairfield. I've been to Washington, D.C. for the climate march, and I'll be going to New York City in September for hopefully the largest climate rally in the history of the planet. Um, my main interest in stopping the use of fossil fuels is to promote the use of renewable energy. <laughs> Everybody was happy. Everything was great after World War XI ended, until yet another war broke out. And with war, as always, came chaos. Aaron! 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 The military, the government, towns and villages, and nature itself. They all collapsed. Straighten up. Preparations have been made, sir. March! Liberators. 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 Liberators, 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 liberators. 
and the Liberator's destruction was so total that all that remained was one man. One woman. And one flower. I am the chair of Maine Voices for Palestinian Rights. It's MVPR is doing everything it can right now to uh, get people informed about what's happening in Palestine, what's happening particularly in Gaza. We are starting a, an outrageous truth campaign. And this campaign, here's the way we define an outrageous truth. An outrageous truth is a plain and simple truth that stuns people who have been believing outrageous lies. At our General Assembly this year, in uh, June in Detroit, we, we passed the resolution for divestment in corporations that are enabling Israel to oppress the people of Palestine. We passed the resolution saying that the Motorola and uh, Caterpillar and Hewitt Packing uh, especially uh, need to be uh, divested from because of their complicity in putting in allowing Israel to oppress the people of Palestine. Do you have any? I'm the sidekick. <laughs> uh, no, she, she's the prodder. <laughs> I'm the prodder. I make, I make the table. I bring the tables lots. I organize. <laughs> okay. What, which Thank is a you. lot. <laughs> Go ahead. This yes, is a this is um, a display um, as part of helping the public understand about a campaign for commercial free childhood, which was started in Boston, and which is developing. Their premise is to stop corporate ma uh, marketers from marketing violence to children. They're promoting screen-free weeks and have done that for years. They're promoting a campaign called Laps Not Apps to not use screen time with very, very young children. They're promoting um, all kinds of work on stopping the sexualization of young girls in our culture by marketers and also protecting children's privacy in schools by looking of how much student data is going into a data cloud, including things like Scholastic and Google, all the brands that we trust. And what this display is looking at is what has changed with marketers, and we use um, Legos as an example. These are what Legos looked like in the 1970s, and they were owned by my son, our son, who is now in his mid-40s. This was in the 1980s, and he <laughs> built Legos that looked very much like this. In the 1990s, our youngest son, who is now 40, built complex rocket ships oh, like no. this <laughs> with these wonderful little pilots inside because Star Wars was a big fork. These now were given as gifts to our three and six year old grandchildren in Cambridge by relatives and friends. And if you can take a look at this, every figure, and this is the least of it, has a blade, a hatchet, blades that will chop you apart. This is what Legos used to look like when children for the last 30 years used them. This is what they look like now, and these are the mildest. Micro fighters, ambush, clone wars, Republic versus separatists, us and them. The violence and war and sexualization has become a big issue with this company. And it's there's a lot of people who are extremely worried about this as um, symbolic of a trend. The Compassion Tent. I'm with the Gathering Place. We're a day shelter. And so if you have no place to go when the shelters are closed, 
we could, we'll take care of you and serve you coffee. Yeah, it's um, 84 Union Street. You can come there Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at between 9 and 3. Mask making and everybody is making themselves masks and being very different on the outside but then talking about how everybody is all the same on the inside. Then we can just do it this way? Right. Yeah. Nice. That's what I was trying to do. Let me get my backpack. Sorry. Yeah. I got it. Just oh, I love it. it. Can I have a picture? Can I take a picture? Oh, there you go. Thank you. Oh, thank you. A universal, publicly funded healthcare system in the state of Maine. And that's the only place that our power lies. We have to have these conversations with each other. We have to organize our own communities and we have to build that grassroots power that will be strong enough to push back around um, the insurance industries and the legislators who don't believe that this is politically possible. You can find us online at mainworkers.org. Uh, we've been traveling all over the state trying to find people who care about this issue and want to do organizing in their own communities around health care as a human right and as a, a worker's issue so that we can all choose employment freely and have work with dignity. I'm Karen DeAndre. I'm the Executive Director for Physicians for Social Responsibility, Main Chapter. And we're at the Peace Fair today uh, asking folks to take action in three different ways to help save our kids. So the first action is around uh, phthalates here in Maine. We are uh, working to add four phthalates, also called the everywhere chemical. And then we're also asking folks to take action on climate today. Uh, the EPA recently released a new plan for redu reducing carbon from, uh, from factories. Um, as you know, Maine is it, the, it is part of the tailpipe of the United, the end of the tailpipe of the United States, and so uh, reducing these emissions is very important to the health of our citizens. And then finally, I think personally, one of my the most interesting action we have going on is helping to create a more peaceful world by turning a nuclear weapon into something peaceful. Um, I work at Midcoast Hunger Prevention Program, so as part of the food tent today, we're trying to encourage kids to get excited about healthy food, so we have like different fruit to put in this chocolate dip cone to eat, and we have healthy recipes and coloring and planting for kids, just to get them interested in like healthier food and looking at that. to the waves, lapping against the shore, and skip the rocks, and hear the ospreys, and look at the bald eagles with their binoculars, and swat the mosquitoes, <laughs> and honor all those parts of us that are connected to Mother Earth, that need the Earth for renewal, and that cannot do all these other tasks, important tasks, without taking time out to be refreshed and to really feel beneath their feet the connection to Mother Earth. Thank this you. is Munchie, our monarch caterpillar. He's eating his little heart out. There it is. Okay, we're from the Unitarian Universalist Church here in Brunswick. Uh, we're talking about three things today. We're talking about the changes that we made, the environmental changes we made when we built our new church. The energy efficiency. The energy efficiency. These are our solar panels here. Yeah. Okay. These are our dual flush toilets. Special flush. <laughs> Special flush. Um, compost bucket recycling. We use the, the clink bottles. We have no paper in our kitchen. Everything is washed. Wow. We have a very green pastor. Wow. Um, cloth napkins for the kids, stainless steel cups. 
and LED lighting, 100% LED lighting. That, the other thing that we're talking about today, and this is Adair, and she can get started. Right, the Green Sanctuary Committee has started a, a project to encourage people to plant milkweed and other plants that provide necessary nectar and shelter for monarch butterflies. They lay their eggs only on milkweed plants. No milkweed, no monarch butterflies. And when you create an environment, whether it's at a school, a church, along a roadside, in your own backyard, it's a wonderful project for children, and you plant a variety of plants, including milkweed, you can make a beautiful butterfly garden. We have free seeds to give away. We have instructions on how to grow them. We have printed material on the migration of the monarch butterfly. And it's a wonderful way to help people of all ages. As an art band rep, I'm honored to present the Peacemaker Award um, to the Veterans for Peace. Um, there's the other veterans for peace in the group. Come on up. So the Peacemaker Award honors the tireless efforts of people who have seen the face of war to protect others from that grim reality and to shift our culture of violence to one rooted instead in cooperation. We are in awe of what they have suffered and proud of their willingness to speak out in support of nonviolence. Thank you. On behalf, on behalf of our chapter 001, we are very grateful to PeaceWorks uh, for this award, but more importantly for this whole Peace Fair. I want to say about the Veterans for Peace, it was created here in Maine actually started with five people meeting in Auburn inside of a Denny's in 1985. For many years the national office was here in Maine. Today it's located in St. Louis and there are now hundreds of chapters all over the country and including chapters in South Korea and England and Vietnam. So Veterans for Peace uh, having started in Maine is growing around the world. We're very grateful. Thank you all very much.
we're gonna do that little intro, right? A little intro. A little intro, we call it. different languages, but I think thank you will do. Um, at this moment, we all also want to think about uh, one of our peacemakers, Jonathan, who uh, received the Peacemaker Award a few years ago, and he died this spring, and we want to remember him. We also are thinking about all the violence that is happening all in so many places, especially in the Middle East, and I'd like to ask you all just have a moment of silence while we think of those who live with violence and pain and torture. Yeah, so we are partly with a heavy heart, but we are also here with a joyful heart that to be together, to sing together, to learn together, and to really say, I can speak out for peace and justice. Thank you. All right, Mom. One, two, three. This land is
for indulging us. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and thank you all. Thank you. And gals, I love this.